Surely the Lord is with us. Every step of our journey. And I trust that you have been enjoying living with a new lifestyle. If Romans chapter 8 does not do something in your life, I don't know what will. We're at the conclusion of our series in Romans chapter 8, and uh, we're at verse 35 through 39. We'll go verse by verse, and we conclude this journey. It has been a rejuvenating journey for me and encouraging us to walk in the Spirit with the understanding of our position in Christ Jesus. We are somebody in God's kingdom, every single one of us, and we contribute to the advancement of his kingdom. In our new lifestyle of being led by the Holy Spirit, we no longer live under the dark cloud of condemnation. You know, there are Christians who are still living under the dark cloud of condemnation. They're being haunted by their past. But we know the Bible lets us know that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to their flesh, but according to the Spirit of God. Since we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit on the day of our conversion, we are legitimate children of God, becoming heirs and joint heirs with Christ. We share in his sufferings to also share in his glory. God has blessed us and given us a reason for living. And we experience God's presence, and he has predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ, by justification through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In our relationship with Christ, by the indwelling person of Holy Spirit, we have been given all things that we need pertaining to being a witness for Jesus Christ. We are effective witnesses for Jesus Christ. And you need to say that to your soul, to your spirit, I am an effective witness for Jesus Christ. Paul reaches the crescendo of his message when he shares these last verses of Scripture in Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39. Verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who dares to separate us? Who dares to even try to separate us? Shall tribulation distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword. Paul asked the question, who or what shall separate us from the love of Christ? God loves us. Irregardless of us not loving ourselves. Sometimes people have trouble loving themselves not realizing that they have been created in the image and likeness of God. Paul makes it clear that being a believer doesn't exempt us from suffering. How many of you know that? <laughs> Every one of you here as a Christian know that we're not exempt from suffering. Because the Bible says, they that live righteous... They that live godly, they that live holy, shall suffer persecution. We know that this is a suffering way. Amen. God is still for us. Before the foundation of the world, God was for us even when we sin. And even when you sin, God is still for you. He does not close or slam the door on his love for you. He loves you irregardless of whether or not you want to acknowledge him or not. But one day, you will have to acknowledge him. 
And you will have to bow before the Son of God and confess that he is Lord and King of kings. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5 says, Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. The only way that we can be holy and blameless before him is us having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Verse 5, he predestined us for the adoption for himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. And it is God's will for us to have a relationship with him. That is the bottom line. God wants a relationship with you. And he has provided the mechanism or the person that you may have a relationship with him and know him and know how much he loves you and cares about your life. He predestined us according to the purpose of his will and he has proven his love for us by sacrificing his son to make it possible to adopt us as his children. I am so glad that I'm not just a child of the Hayden family. I am so glad that I'm a part of the family of God. I am a child of God. Even though that I'm broken and imperfect, I am a child of God. And even though you're broken and imperfect, you are a child of God. As you have come into relationship with Jesus Christ, Paul identifies with us seven situations that occurred in his life as he bore witness of Jesus Christ. And if you are going to bear witness of Jesus Christ in your life, understand that people are going to be upset. Because you're full of mercy and you're full of grace and you're full of love and you're full of forgiveness and you're full of kindness. You're full of all of God's character because of the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. God has given you his spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 through 28 gives you a description of all that Paul suffered because he was identified with Jesus Christ. He gave his life to Jesus Christ. He gave a list of things he had done to endure for the sake of being identified with Christ. Your sin may stop other people from loving you. Hello. But God will never stop loving and desiring you to have a relationship with him. He's long-suffering. He waits and he waits and he waits until you come to your senses that without him, nothing is possible. You can try to live without acknowledging him, but at some point, you're going to acknowledge him. Verse 36, as it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Paul is referencing Psalm 44, 22 to remind us that in this life, believers will be faced with all sorts of afflictions and some will even face martyrdom. There are people all over the world being identified with Jesus Christ and are suffering martyrdom because they will not deny him. They said, I would rather die than deny Jesus Christ. And we live in a world, in a country that is full of all things. In the early days of the church, the followers of Christ faced martyrdom Every day, persecutors did not value the testimony of believers even until this day. People who persecute you, they don't value your testimony of Jesus Christ. They would not care 
whether or not you had a relationship with Jesus Christ. All they want to do is exert their power and their control over you. They don't care if you're connected with God. And back then, people did not care that you called yourself a follower of Jesus Christ. But the day will come when people will be tried by persecution of their faith. Somewhere in the world, and you need to know that, people are dying because of Jesus. The enemy desires nothing more than to silence the witnesses of Jesus Christ. You see, we are to be led by the Spirit of God, not fearful, but bold. Bold, because God has given us the spirit of power and might to do the things that the Holy Spirit would prompt us to do. You know, if the Spirit of God prompts you to say something, will you say it? If the Spirit of God tells you to do something, will you do it? Will you question, well, you know, I don't know if I should do this. I don't know if I should say this. I don't know that person. They may get angry at me for saying this. You never know what value you bring into people's lives when you are obedient to the Spirit of God. When the Holy Spirit prompts you, you should say, Lord, if it's you, I'm going to take the first step and I'm going to proceed and say what you have put in my heart to say. Verse 37, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. In all the struggles and all of the trials and all of the tribulations and all of the things that confront you to slow up your progress of being an effective witness of Jesus Christ, you're more than a conqueror. You're an overcomer. Because what reason? Because you have eternity in you because of the indwelling person of the Holy Spirit. In all the adversities of life, God is with us. God is with us. God is with you. You're struggling, God is with you. You're suffering, God is with you. You're tempted, God is with you. You're having problems with your equilibrium or problems seeing or problems hearing or problems with your movement. God is with with you every step of the way God is with you and we need to acknowledge that by saying Lord I thank you the Bible says in everything give thanks not for everything but in everything give thanks because this is the will of God concerning you not concerning everybody else. Because when you're having a situation and unbelievers hear you say, well, thank God. Thank God. And you're having to deal with all this? What do you mean, thank God? They don't understand it. But you understand that you have been called to give thanks because God is working out every detail concerning your life. In the adversities of life, God is with us, and I, as I shared last week, one with God is what? A majority. One shall put the flight of a thousand and two tens of thousands. If God is with you, hello, sister. <laughs> Who shall be against you? Who can be against you? Who has the right, the authority over God's will in your life? No one does. They may oppose you, but God is with you. Believers are more than conquerors because, and I have a list, a little list of things, because we have the word of God. We have the word of God. We have God's word. 
Deuteronomy 28, 7 says, The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. That knowledge helps us when people are coming against us. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Hallelujah. The word of God is encouraging. Isaiah 54, 7 says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from whom? Me, says the Lord. Psalms 97 10 says, O you who love the Lord, hate evil, his, he preserves the lives of his saints, he delivers them from the hand of the wicked. You don't know who's plotting against you, but know that people who are in this world, they plot against the righteous. They scheme against the righteous. But know that God has covered you. We are more than conquerors because we have Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. John chapter 10, 10 says, The thief comes not but to steal and kill and destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. John 1, chapter, 1 John chapter 5, 15 says, And he who has the Son has life and does not and he that does not have the Son does not have life. So life comes through Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 21 says, And for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. God did that for us. While we were sinners with stuck-up noses, saying that I don't want a part of religion, but God didn't ask us to be religious. He just wants a relationship with us. Amen. And people give excuses. Well, I don't want anything to do with religion. And then you should ask them, well, would you like to have a relationship with God who created you, who knows all about you and what you need? And what is ahead and what's around the corner? Would you like to have a relationship with God? And so you just shut that religion right down. Because people will give excuses and reasons why they do not want a relationship. We are more than conquerors because we possess the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. God has given us his spirit. And in his spirit, we have the character of God. The fruit of Holy Spirit represents God's character. God is love. God is joy. He's peace. And all of these other categories. Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the spirit helps us in our weaknesses. So you are being helped in your weakness by the Holy Spirit for we do not know what we pray for, what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for our words. Romans 8:34, and we shared these scriptures in Romans when we shared the entire eighth chapter. But these are reminders. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised who is at the right hand of God interceding for you. For you. Yeah. You. You, yes. He's interceding for you. And you're never alone. Never alone. 
and you feel that I, I, I just can't pray, he's interceding for you. The burden is so heavy on your heart, he's interceding for you. He is going before God the Father for you because you are covered by his blood and filled with his spirit and are an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You are valued. Verse 38, for I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers understand that Paul has had many near death experiences. Some of us rarely have near death experiences or oh, have a headache. Oh, I stubbed my toe. Oh, my joints are out of, I, I need a chiropractor. My joints are out of place. But Paul endured many near-death experiences, and that's why he could declare this. He is sure that God is in control of the affairs of his life because of all that he endured for the sake of the gospel of grace. We are saved by grace and not of works. Glory to God. Because some of you cannot work somebody else and they wouldn't be saved. Somebody could give more than other people could give and somebody wouldn't be saved. Because if they had to do as you do and give as you give, but we're saved by grace, amen. Amen. Romans 8, 28, and he says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Has anything ever gone awry in your life and you didn't have an understanding of what was going on and you prayed and you waited and you prayed and you waited and you realized that God was holding things back so you could receive your blessing? All the while you were waiting, you were getting close to God. Come on, somebody. You would not get close to him in any other situation that had occurred. But now the burden is upon you, and it doesn't look very good for you, and you're crying out to the Lord because you don't understand what is going on. In the spiritual realm, God is working out for your good, the details of your destiny. He knew that God loved him, and that's why he wrote, For God, mm, God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 28. He considered himself the chief of sinners. He says, all the things that I've gained, I lose because of the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I cast them into the wind. And I am a chief sinner because I have persecuted the church and I've killed people. I've saw innocent people put to death because of my stubbornness. Because of the knowledge that I had, that I thought that I was doing God's will. Verse 39 in closing, somebody say praise the Lord. <laughs> nor height, nor death, nor any other thing in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The extremes of life cannot separate us from God's love. Being without, being homeless, being sick, being terminal ill. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Demons or angels can never undo the relationship 
with his redeemed children. Come on, somebody. The powers of hell, the Bible says, Jesus says, the gates of hell shall not prevail Hello? She'll not prevail. She'll not prevail. Don't be weak in your response. Come on. Against us. The gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Uh, That means against you and me. Whatever we're doing to further God's kingdom, the devil in hell cannot prevail against us. Because the Bible says, greater is God's investment in you. Greater is he that is within you than he that's in the world. The presence of God is in you, beloved. The day that you believe, the day that you receive Jesus Christ, You were sealed. You're God's property. No trespassing. Trespassers will be. (laughs) Will meet their day of doom. There is nothing above or below in the entire created realm that can thwart God's purpose for us in Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. I I, I just wish that you uh, could celebrate this good news. Nothing. Nothing. People can withhold things from you, but it's not going to thwart God's purpose for your life. They can prevent you from succeeding, but that's not going to thwart God's purpose in life for you. Nothing. Think about that. Nothing. If the saints of God could grasp this, my goodness, we would light this community up. Your application. It is God's will for us to be confident in our relationship with Christ Jesus. Know that he's on your side. Know that he is interceding for you. Know that he will never forsake you. Even though you may get lonely, even though you may get misunderstood, even though people may come against you, he will never leave you. Life doesn't get any better. I am living my best life. And you ought to be living your best life as a child of God. People ask me, how are you doing? I say, if it gets any better, I'm going to be in heaven. And that should be every child of God's motto because We know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, the called according to his purpose. Are you called according to the purpose of God? You are living your best life, beloved. You may have a little pain. Things may not seem clear in your thinking, but you are living your best life in Jesus Christ with what you have to work with. Praise the Lord, somebody. Because we are all broken people and saved by the grace of God, let us pray. Father God, we are so grateful, Lord, that you love us and that you're with us and that you give us all that we need to be conformed to the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are our motivation for life. You are our motivation to speak into the hearts and lives of people that don't know you. Father, we just pray that you would help us to be swift witnesses for your son, Jesus. 
And Father, for those that are standing or sitting in the valley of decision, we can't convince them, but the Holy Spirit can convince them and convict them for their need for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.